All right, guys, we're going to start part six of our study through Philippians. Um, yesterday, we looked at what it means to be a partner in the gospel, the idea of what the gospel is, that it's the good news of Jesus Christ, of the sinless life that he lived, him taking the place of sinners on the cross and uh, raising from the dead, and uh, that when we put our faith in Christ, that not by works, but by grace through faith, we're saved. And so that is good news. And uh, Paul is addressing the church at uh, Philippi about being and thanking them and praying for them because they are partners in the gospel. And so we looked at a couple ways that we partner in the gospel. Uh, the first thing that we looked at is uh, that, that there's both the idea of, um, let me go back to it here, it's both the defense and confirmation of the gospel, but then we also looked about how making disciples that were advancing the gospel. So we're going to look at a couple more ways uh, that we are to partner in the gospel. And so the next one is this. It says it in uh, Philippians 2.22. So we're kind of skipping ahead to look at how uh, Paul addresses the church at Philippi and how they specifically are adhering to this idea of partnering in the gospel. And so this is Philippians 2.22 says, But you know Timothy's proven worth, how as a son with the father he has served with me in the gospel. So he's addressing Timothy, one of the persons that he uh, is partners in the gospel with and one of these people that he has mentored. And he, and he refers to this phrase that he served with me in the gospel. And, and so I just want to make that statement to you that if, if you want to partner in the gospel, that you need to be serving the body and serving for the body and serving to grow the body. And so um, I'm just curious, how do you serve the church? 1 Corinthians chapter 12 uh, talks about how every part of the body has a specific function. And uh, it, it's kind of talking about all the different parts of the body and how all the parts of the body form one body. And so we can look at that at all the local churches form the capital C church, but we also look at it as every individual um, church, every individual body uh, has specific needs and that God has uniquely equipped every one of us with certain gifts and talents for the purpose of serving the church. And so you may look at your life and you may say, well, I don't have, I don't have any special gifts that I could serve the church with. And uh, I would just tell you, pray about it. Search the scriptures because I promise you that God has uniquely gifted you to serve him and to serve the body of Christ. And so in what ways has God given you uh, talents? What do you have a heart for? What do you have a desire to see God do in people's lives? Uh, how do you want to see God change the community? What are some things that you do or drive you? Uh, those are different ways that you can look at um, go look at the scriptures that talk about the gifts of the Spirit. Go look at the scriptures that talk about how to serve the church. And so read 1 Corinthians chapter 12 as a way to study that. And so I just encourage you that you're called to be a partner in the gospel, which means you're also called to serve the body of Christ. And um, so serve the church. If you want to partner in the gospel, you need to serve the church. And here's the last one, and I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this one. Um, nobody likes to hear about money. Um, somehow we've got this concept that churches just want our money. And so anytime a pastor starts to talk about how you should give, it comes across as very selfish, especially when we've got so many uh, pastors that have taken advantage of churches, of church members, who have taken advantage of people who are willing to give. And I just want to tell you that as we approach, I'm going to talk to you about giving and about how part of partnering in the gospel is giving. And uh, if you get this idea that somehow that I'm doing this just because I personally want your money, I just want you to know that not a dollar that comes to this church am I going to see. Um, this is not for me. This is not, this is nothing. Um, I don't get a paycheck. The more you give, the more ministry we do here. And so I just encourage you, if you feel uncomfortable with uh, me talking about giving or you think that I just give to another congregation, give to another church, find a, find a gospel-centered um, movement to give to, find a church that you can uh, partner with. If you feel like you can't partner with the gospel, uh, with the avenue, then um, just know that we love you still and we'll still make these videos and we'll still encourage you. Um, but you need to find a church that you can partner with in this way. And so um, Paul 
actually directly addresses the partnership of the gospel when it comes to finances towards the end of his letter in Philippians. Philippians 4.15 says, And you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only. And so Paul had early on gone to the church at Philippi, and they were one of the only churches that partnered with him in this way of giving. And he says, you alone are the ones who help this ministry keep going. And so I believe that God blesses, not in a financial sense, but God blesses when people are willing to give to ministries. Um, And sometimes we think that giving is just so that there's money for operations to happen. But did you know that part of discipleship and part of being a good disciple is to give uh, to give faithfully, the scriptures to say to give cheerfully, and uh, I believe that God wants us to give until we become cheerful about it. And so, if you'd like to partner in the gospel with the avenue, uh, there's some ways you can do that. Uh, I've included a uh, a link that you can uh, click on. Uh, you can also text; the phone number will be on there, and uh, you can text that amount. Uh, the one thing that I would say about it is, uh, if you feel in your heart that you should give to this ministry, just know that every dollar that comes here is to make disciples who make disciples. Uh, So pray about that. And so how do we become partners in the gospel? Well, this idea first, you know, you have to know the Lord. You have to know who Jesus Christ is. Um, You have to have a relationship with God through Jesus. And of course, that's the start of it. But once you become a disciple, once you become a follower of Christ, um, You need to advance the gospel. You need to go on the offense and the defense for the gospel. Um, You need to uh, serve in the church, around the church, and serve people of the church. And also, you need to give to the body. 